How easy is it to lift up your 300L compared to my WR250R that I used to own? It's actually almost identical. I really haven't noticed a difference and I actually feel like it's back to front because the 300L carries its weight a little lower to the ground. So it actually hides that seven kilos. So they feel very, very similar. The difference to me is almost negligible, but I'm a reasonably sized bloke. If you're not too fit or maybe you're small of stature, you might notice it a little bit more, but if you're trying to decide between the two it's just as easy to pick both up mate the next question is from Benjamin Franklin III and he's asking, is there any chance I could do a review on the Energica Xperia? So that's an electric bike that I brought up in an adventure news episode a few episodes ago. Looks like a very interesting adventure tourer, fully electric and available right now. I looked at my closest Energica dealership. Turns out it's a 46 hour drive from me. So that's a no at the moment, Benjamin. But if a dealership does come out here in Perth, Australia, you'll be sure that I'll get a leg over for you and see what it's all about. The next question is from Gunther and he is saying, I would like to hear the pros and cons if you would compare the new Husky 501 to my 300L. First off Gunther, let me tell you, you've opened the can of worms. This is really a hard topic to condense down into a short form to try and help you out. You also haven't given me your riding terrain. What kind of riding are we talking about? I'm gonna assume it's a little bit of everything because both of these bikes are fantastic at that job once they're modified to suit the rider. Let's break it down as simply as I can because I literally could spend half an hour on this topic and I don't want to bore you to death. The clear winners in the KTM column is the performance. You've got that power, you've got that suspension, you've also got that crazy lightweight. They're stupidly light. On top of that, there's also a fantastic accessory market out there. So you really can modify these to be lightweight adventure bikes. And on the Honda corner, you've got the price tag. It comes in at under half the price of the Husqvarna here in Australia. The other thing is the durability of the motor. They're both very very reliable, but the Honda motor requires much less upkeep. We're talking about 10,000 kilometers between oil service, whereas the KTM, most of the time you're looking at 15 to 2,000 kilometers, you can push that. There's no hard and fast rule, and it's never going to be the same as the 300L. The other benefit of the 300L is I think it's the better bike on the road. It's much more composed. There's less vibes. It's just less fatiguing. When I've ridden Enduros on the road, I get tired far quicker than what I do on the 300L. Because the 300L is an ideal either is all relative but between these two bikes it's the better bike on the road so what about the cons well the ktm is very expensive so you've got to have the money not only to buy it but then to fork out for all the mods straight out of the box it isn't the best for dual sport riding it can do it but it's not a comfortable experience like i said the service intervals is another thing you've got to consider if you don't like tinkering on your bike all the time or it's a cost factor for you servicing that bike is going to cost money and you're going to have to do it on the regular the other big one is well is it doesn't have a subframe. So you gotta be a little more creative as to where you put the weight on the bike. Cons of the Honda, it's significantly heavier. If lightweight is the absolute pinnacle of importance to you, then the Honda really is going to disappoint. It's over 20 kilos heavier. The other big thing is the power. If you're the kind of guy that loves lifting the front wheel, you're all about getting a big grin on your face and scaring the crap out of yourself every now and then when you twist the throttle. If you've got quite high skill levels, the 300L is probably going to disappoint in the power and performance area. The other big thing with the 300L is the suspension. It's quite underwhelming if you're an intermediate and beyond rider. While some accessory makers have stated they are designing tanks for the 300L, there aren't any really great options other than a rotor pack. So that's my really haphazard breakdown of the two. You didn't state the terrain or your skill level, so I am kind of flying blind here. I hope that helps, mate, and good luck on the decision. The next comment is from Andreas, and he's saying, solid, love your content. Cheers, mate, really appreciate appreciate it. What bike would you consider for a round the world trip? Oh, this is a fun one and one I often like just thinking about in my spare time. Yes, I'm a weirdo. Do you go with a 500 EXC modified like round the world Paul? Do you go with a DR650? Do you go with an adventure bike giving you more comfort but restricting the kind of roads you're going to do? I always land on lightweight and durability and for me that would have to be the CRF 300 Rally. Now people are probably going to roll their eyes. Of course, Solid, you've got a 300L. You're a Honda fan 
Boy. Just hear me out. It's got so many features for it. It's affordable. You're going to be in a lot of countries where parts are going to be difficult to get for some bikes. And no matter where you are in the world, middle of Malaysia, South America, or the road of bones, getting Honda parts for a small displacement motorcycle is going to be a lot easier than many fruitier kinds of motorcycles. It's also got that big tank, so it's got a fair amount of distance. And it's also pretty light stool as well at just over 150 kilos. You've got that wind protection and you've got that dead reliable little single cylinder motor. The only thing I would do to it is basically in the modifications I've done on my 300L, luggage options, crash protection, and suspension and you're good to go basically. The only bike that I would consider over it would be a WR250R. And the reason I haven't given that as my number one bike is because it's been discontinued. I would go with the 250R as number two and my third option, I might toy with a Husqvarna 501 or a KTM 500 EXE like Round the World Paul because that looks like a lot of fun too. I really would stick with lightweight and maneuverable because my focus would be on the countries where you've got heavy traffic and splitting as lead. Eagle, I'm going to want a skinny little bike to zip through the traffic. I'm not going to want to get stuck in those kind of environments. 300 Rally, I think, is my best option on the market at the moment for myself. Thanks for the great question, mate. The next comment is from Dan L56 or Daniel. I do recognize the name, so good to see you, mate. Dan is saying congratulations on being a dad. Cheers, mate. Really appreciate it. It's always hard to do those personal talks to the camera. It's why I leave them to those off-road rides. And even bigger news is we've found out that it's a baby girl. So we're really excited and looking forward to it. But like I said, we're also terrified. It's going to be a roller coaster. Whichever way this takes your channel, rest assured we're all along for the ride. Cheers, mate. Thanks for the support. Glad to hear you caught the sun rot early yeah the damn cancer eh been whittled on a couple of times myself well there you go mate i hope you're all well and you're healed up and you're not worrying about it too much so the next comment is from lg or algae not sure how you pronounce it i probably should know because i know you've been following me for a while saying hey solid how you doing mate good to hear from you wondering why you don't use first gear at all when riding really slow in the single track i can only ride really slow in single track <laughs> i can't ride really fast so it's the only mode i've got uh, i realize the bike is capable of lugging in second yeah it is saying but keeping the revs up a bit higher in first is surely more stall proof and responsive yes it would be more responsive in first and is more responsive in first but here's the two major reasons why i spend most of my time in second gear in technical terrain one is to smooth out that throttle. Every single cylinder EFI bike I've ridden, first gear is really choppy. That's partly because of emissions and that's just the nature of EFI bikes. And that's partly because I'm not the best rider so my throttle control isn't really dialed in. So being in second gear helps smooth out that and allows me to deal with the throttle a lot easier. The bigger reason of the two is that I find it is far easier to maintain traction in second gear than it is first when you're in that very slow speed stuff and you're trying to get momentum under you. So second gear allows me to smooth it out. It also means all that throttle response and power isn't delivered immediately. So it's almost like a traction control system. It allows me to maintain grip better and I've never had problems with the clutch. So it's worked for me thus far and that's why I stay in second gear instead of first most of the time. If you want more Q&A content, check out my previous video where we discuss whether adventure bikes are slowly replacing cruisers. And if you want to see more of my 300L and how the suspension's going, check out part three where I test it off-road and you can see what I thought about my brand new suspension. And until next time, don't forget to say shiny side up and I'll see you in the next one. Catch you later.